Merry Christmas. Come on, tell somebody Merry Christmas. I'm sure everyone is completely ready. House is decorated. Presents all wrapped, ready to go. Grocery list done. No? No, Merry Christmas. And uh, we're all set up at our house. Alexa has all the decorating done, and we're getting ready. We haven't bought one present, but we're getting ready. And uh, my mom... We uh, spent some time at their house a few weeks ago. She's already, it looks like Christmas Lane over there. And I looked up on the, um, on the mantle and every grandchild had a stocking. I would begin to think, I said, when did I get bumped? Where's my stocking, mom? I was joking with her. She had all her grandchildren up there. And we went back last week and saw she had every stocking back, all 117 stockings across the mantle. Now, we're all set up ready for Christmas. We love this season. We love Christmas, but how many know it's, it's much more about all those things? It's, it's about Jesus who came. And we read in John 3.16, the most famous scripture all for, for God so loved the world that he gave. And aren't you glad that he did that for you and I? And we had our youth, our, our Volt team, they put on an amazing production. Anybody get to catch that? The Christmas comedy they put on, that was, that was amazing, and we saw the story behind that, and you know, of late, uh, we've been watching some Christmas movies, anybody, you watch some Christmas movies, what comes with that is all the sweets, cookies, and popcorn, hot chocolate, all that, anybody in that Christmas time uh, cel- celebration yet, no, just me, just me putting on some pounds, no, I've been uh, celebrating and love this season and this time together. It's important that we take time with our family. We take time to, you know, whether you're going on vacation, just taking time off from work, and it is very important. But we must understand as Christians, as believers, that it's much more than just a a Hollywood-style Christmas where we just take a week off and, and just sit with family and go into debt. How many are done with debt? I know we did that series. You done with debt? But it's about Jesus who came. And he gave his life for us. And so Christmas celebrates a divine event. It's not just another holiday or we celebrate something that happened within our nation or some accomplishment. But it is, it's a divine celebration of Christmas, um, not as, as far as just human history and just celebrating a day, but celebrating something that changed our lives forever. A genuine celebration of Christmas recognizes the eternal sovereign God that came to earth as a human being, to live a righteous life among his people. Are you thankful for that? So we must be careful that we don't just sentimentalize the day as just something we do once a year or even as Thanksgiving. We we celebrate Thanksgiving and it's a one-day thing, but that truly we have the heart of Jesus every single day, that we're thankful every single day. And as we celebrate Jesus, we celebrate Christmas, we must never lose sight of the reality that the child in that manger in Bethlehem was more than a sweet, innocent infant, but he was first and foremost the almighty God who sent his son, right? He sent his son to die for us. He made a way for us. The Bible says when there was no way, he made a way. And that was Jesus who came. That is Christmas. He laid down his life. The Bible says that there is no greater love than for someone who would lay his life down for a friend and and we want to thank you, you guys at Family for being here this morning. We recognize you all. It's so good to have you. And, and that morning, um, you know, I, I remember I was back here, like ministry time, and I heard that loud thud, and I ran outside, saw what was happening, and, uh, and watched our security team rush out there. And Pastor Mike was mentioning Ben, and uh, I was kind of in awe because they were jumping in, busting the glass, doing all the things, and, you know, jumping in to help somebody, and I just, that's the love of Christ. We see that, and that's what, our, that's what this world needs, not just for moments of emergency, but in daily life, that we love each other, that we lay down our lives for one another, that we prefer one another. It starts sometimes by just being nice, just smiling, right? Opening the door for somebody, you know, that, that used to be a thing, right? Maybe husbands, just start with your wife, and then you can get better from that. Ladies, again, that was your moment. That was, that was your moment. 
No, but that's that's what the Bible tells us. No greater love than you lay down your life for someone else. It means that you're willing to put yourself in harm's way that somebody else could benefit other than you. Amen? And that's what Jesus calls us to. It's not about church. It's not about religion. It's not about Sunday attendance. It's not about looking the part. But really, Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Amen? And that's what he says in Luke Luke 19.10. He says, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are lost. Jesus didn't come to have some religious church service. You know, Jesus didn't do that. People came to him. The crowds came to him. But why? Because he came to serve rather than to be served. He came to love rather than to be loved. That's why Jesus could go to the cross pretty much alone with everybody turning their back on him because he didn't come to get recognition. He came to bring reconciliation for me and you. Isn't that amazing? He said, I have not come in Luke 5 verse 32. He said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And that's what I love. that Jesus did not get along with the religious people in the Bible. He irked them and irritated them. But you know what Jesus said? He, he made a statement because they got irritated. He was going to the house of a sinner. And he said, I haven't come here for those who got it all together. His nickname, one of his Jesus friend of sinners. They got irritated when he was talking to people culturally he wasn't supposed to be talking to. He was talking to the poor. He was talking to the lepers that the religious people made sure they were far, 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 far away from them. We'll get into that story in just a moment. Romans 5 verse 8. You can put that on the screen. You can also open your Bibles if you have them this morning. Sorry, I have some cough drops. Don't don't mind me. I'm not being rude. I just need a little cough drop. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. I love that verse right there. I could preach on that the rest of the service. Maybe I will. But God demonstrates his love for us. Aren't you glad God isn't like us who will just say we love you, right? We say that. It's Christmas. We say I love you. Hopefully you say I love you. You know, we use love. That that word means a lot more than sometimes the way we use it. We say I love pizza, but you also say I love my wife. How many know it's a little different? Like, baby, I love you, and, oh, baby, I love you, right? <laughs> you pick which one, <laughs> right? We, we love food. Sorry, it's that Christmas season. I've just been putting it in. We have that fast coming up. We're packing it in, the fatted calf, and the fast is coming, right? But we use love in many different ways, but how many know that when we really love, that there's action, You know, God took action with his love for us. that He loved us so much. It's really hard to comprehend this. How many have children, grandchildren? So you you have a part of your flesh, right? You see that person, that son, that grandchild, that daughter, that that granddaughter, and you see them, and I, I believe, hopefully, all of us, many of us, you would lay down your life for them, right? You feel that love? But you want to know how much Jesus loved us? That he would give his son for us. That doesn't make sense to my human thinking, but you know what makes sense? That God loves you and I so much that he would send Jesus to die for us. It says that he demonstrates his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, that means while we were still enemies of God, He sent his son to die for us before he would even know if we would say yes or not. Just to give me the opportunity to say, yes, God, I give my life to you. I received that gift of salvation, which is Jesus who died for me in my sin. Just the opportunity. Isn't that amazing? That's how God demonstrates his love. While we will just do lip service, you know, we see love as we see in Hollywood you know, most Hallmark and, I'm sorry, I call out Hallmark. I can't watch them. The love stories and all that, I can't watch the, the love stuff. I told Alexa, Alexa's my wife. I told her I like movies to make me feel good. I'm not going to pay money to get my heart broken in a movie. I don't need that. I'm already married. I got the girl. I'm good. Make me laugh or shoot something. That, that, that's it. Right? But God demonstrated his love for us. 
It wasn't lip service. He backed it up. He sent his son. How many are thankful for that? And if we jump down to verse 11, it says, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that's Christmas. What we're talking about here, that's real Christmas. We're watching a lot of Christmas movies and stuff. I like a good Christmas movie. But you know what? What what Christmas is really about, it's not the Christmas spirit, all the little things. You know, my wife and I took a little, and the family, we took a small trip into like this Christmas town and all this. It was great. It was fun. They were talking about Christmas spirit and all this. And I just said, man, there's, in all of the Christmas, there's not a lot of Jesus. Because, you know, the old, the old saying I used to hear, Jesus is the reason for the season. He's everything. He's the centerpiece. He's the solid rock in which we stand on. He's the reason we can celebrate today. And so our joy today is in Jesus. The Christmas joy is really what the message is today. But that joy is Jesus. And the thing is, we, you know, I've been guilty of it. We do vacations. We do time off. We look forward to certain things. And that is like the highlight of our year. You'll work all year long to go on vacation. You'll, you'll work all year long to get that bonus, um, to, to attain a certain thing. You know, we look forward to, you know, time off, spending time with the family and all that. But there's nothing wrong with that in itself. But if that is the joy, then what happens is you go on vacation, you spend the money, you go into debt, whatever it is, you get done vacation, you need a vacation from your vacation, and you need another 11 months to pay off the vacation, so you end up more miserable than when you even started before you went on vacation. Anybody ever experienced that? You get off vacation, you're like, well, that was fun, but man, I'm depressed. <laughs> right? You're like that. I gained 10 pounds, lost 10 grand, and I... And not happy, right? And the kids are still complaining because it wasn't fun enough for them, right? And you're tired. Not only that, you go back to work the next day, right? So our joy isn't in those things. Yes, have, have fun. Yes, do your vacation. You know, work hard, vacation hard. You know, spend time with the family, have fun, do the presents, have the time together. It's important. But the centerpiece is Jesus. He's the rest. He said, come to me. Catch this. This is what Jesus said. He said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. You're tired. And he said, I will show you how to take a real rest. That means you can rest in everything that you're going through and what you're doing. You can rest in him because he's got your back. He's on your side. He's going to walk with you. He's not going to leave you. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Isn't that amazing? That's who Jesus is. That is the joy of Christmas. It wasn't just the baby who came, but it was the man Jesus who laid down his life for us. He came to us fully God and fully man and laid down his life for you and I. So that true joy that we find is found in Jesus. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. You want to open up to that. I'll tell you a story why you're open up to that. I wasn't going to say it, but I'll do it anyway. My wife and a couple of my kids went to um, Dulles uh, yesterday. And my son, Hannon, went to his grandfather's house. So I was home alone. (laughs) My favorite Christmas movie. If We've watched it like 10 times. And in honor of that movie, I did something. I ordered a large cheese pizza to myself last night. Home alone, no kids, no nothing. Stuffed crust, almost ate the whole thing. Crushed it. (laughs) Then after after I got done eating my pizza, I went and sat on the couch for 30 minutes in silence. No TV, nothing. I just sat there. I just looked at the wall. No phone. Just sat there breathing. And I texted my wife. I said, I just sat in silence for 30 minutes. The house is completely quiet. I was like, this is amazing. This is awesome. I don't ever really remember this feeling. I enjoyed it. I went, as Pastor Mike talked last week, the nothing box. I went there. I did nothing. And I enjoyed that. And parents, those who have young kids, don't sometimes you're like, I just need some peace and quiet. I just want to go get a hotel room by myself and just sit there, right? And we think that's what we want, that's what we need. Now, that was great and all, but after the 30 minutes were over, guess what? I sent out a text to some of my leaders like, hey, who wants to come over? 
right? Let's get this party started, right? We think we want something. We think we need something and that that is going to be my peace. That is going to be my joy when you really, that's not it. After the 30 minutes were over, I was like, all right, bring back the circus, bring back the breaking plates, bring back the broken TV, bring back the screaming and crying, right? The carnival can stay. You see, it's the same thing. We think that our joy is found in something other than God. We think that it's found in something other than Jesus. We try to find things. The world offers everything, right? And the enemy, as, as years go on, as generations come, and as generations pass, it changes, the drug changes, the party changes, but it's the same old story. It's the same old carrot on a stick. Amen? Jesus is still the joy of Christmas. He says, for unto us a child is born, unto us the son is given, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. That's my Jesus. Let's go to Luke 17. Just a few things before we finish up this morning. I don't have too much of a voice. Can I get an amen? Hey, come on now. So I don't have, I don't have too much more. I got four cough drops lined up. When they're gone, I'm done. I'm on one of four. It said, now it happened when he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then he entered a certain village and he met 10 men who were lepers. This is the story of the 10 lepers. And they called out to Jesus. And they said, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, please have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. Now this is the thing. Did he heal them before they went? What did he tell them to do? He said, go. That's almost a different sermon. So I won't go too far into it. But you see, it takes faith. They had to trust him. They had to go before they received their miracle. Sometimes we just sit there and wait. But it's in the going. You have to activate your faith by going, not just sitting there. Amen? Amen. And he said, um, where am I at? Verse 14. He saw them and said, go show yourself to the priest. And they went. The Bible says they were cleansed. How many were there? Ten. Only one came back. One came back to Jesus. When he realized he was healed, one came back. I'm not a mathematician. How many is that? So how many were missing? Nine, is that right? So nine were missing. One came back. He approaches Jesus, and he said, it says that this is what he did. He saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God. With a what kind of voice? Man, we get loud for stuff, right? Some of the quietest people in church are the loudest people outside of church. I don't know what it is. We go to a football game, right? I've lost my voice for dumb stuff. Roller coasters. I've lost my voice a million times at M&T Bank Stadium. But when we come in church, we're a little quieter sometimes, right? When we spend time with God, we can be a little bit more um, eloquent and quiet. But you know what? He came to Jesus because he was thankful with a loud voice, fell at his feet, and he showed that, that spirit of thankfulness and gratitude. We must be grateful. This, this Christmas, let's be grateful. We get with our family, let's be grateful. God has given us another year. He's given us another opportunity. We never know what tomorrow may bring. We never know what life is going to throw our way. The Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Things happen. We live in a world that is full of sin and full of mess. You just never know. Get your family together. I don't know. I don't, I'm not telling you to preach, but, you know, at least be thankful. Just say, hey, let's, let's all say what we're thankful for. You know, let's, I want to pray that this year is going to be the greatest year of your life, whatever it is, but stir up thanksgiving in our hearts, not just presence and, and even in the name of family time. We need Jesus in the center. He needs to be the centerpiece of this Christmas. Jesus said, 
He said, were there not any found who returned to give glory except this one foreigner? But he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Another translation says, your faith has made you whole. See, many people receive things from God, but they're not whole. They get blessings from God, then they walk away. God answers their prayers, and then they're gone. You get the marriage, you get the spouse, you get the family, or you get, get the job, you get the money, different things that you pray for or ask God for, you get the healing, and then we're gone. It was one out, of, one out of 10 came back. It's probably accurate in today. Today's times are with people receive things from God. You pray, you pray, you pray, and you get. We become people, I want, I want. All about me, what I can get. Very, even as adults, we're very childish. It's all about what we can get. Life is not about what you can attain. God will give you things. He says he will supply your needs. He will bless you. All of that is true. But that's not the centerpiece. That's not, what, that's not what you should be chasing. Amen? And so from the ungrateful lepers, we can, we can learn this morning a lesson of ingratitude. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful. Let's not be those people. Let's be thankful. Let's not make it about us. You see, even in Christmas, our giving can become self-centered. You say, well, I'm a giver. Well, there's a lot of people who are givers, but the giving is still about them, right? You didn't even say thank you. Well, it was a gift. It wasn't about you. Yes, teach your kids to have manners and say please and thank you. But at the end of the day, our life that we pour out, Jesus was on the cross. He didn't say, well, you didn't say thank you. Where am I? You know what? My fam there's only a few people here. I'm not doing this. No, Jesus came to lay down his life, and we do the same. We've come to lay down our lives as well. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, it says, For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents. You can save that one for your kids. Unthankful and unholy. We need to be thankful. Being thankful is an element of faith. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Give thanks in some circumstances, for this is God's... Did I read it wrong? Give thanks in all circumstances. Somebody say all. Man, that's not easy. It can be tough. But it goes on to say that's God's will for your life. You say, oh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell this person. I'm trying to help this person right here. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's a great scripture for us in the things we're going through. For when you're helping people, you're praying with people, you're going through a trial, give thanks in all circumstances. Why? It sets the tone. Giving thanks sets the tone. I hate to, that I always talk about sports. But in sports, a good coach will always tell their players, somebody must set the tone. Right? In a football game, it's football season, college football NFL, whatever you watch, you know, soccer, volleyball, NASCAR, whatever you do. You got to set the tone, right? Maybe not in NASCAR, but you got to set the tone. How do you set the tone in your home? How do you set the tone in your life, in your day? It starts with thankfulness. We have Thanksgiving, right? Most thankful day of the year. Used to be a full day. Now it's a half a day because the holiday of Black Friday is cut in, the most unthankful day of the year. I once watched a woman, well, first of all, me and my mom used to be a family tradition from the age of like 7, 8, 9, 10. We used to get up at 4 a.m. and go get a snow globe from Boscov's. First 100, 200 customers got a little snow globe. That was our tradition, right? And you see some craziness out there. People lose their minds over some sheets. <laughs> I almost got into it one day. This is a long time ago with a young man who pushed over an elderly lady over some Egyptian cotton sheets at Walmart. I made sure that woman got the sheets and I told that guy how I felt and he felt very bad after said, are you not nice? <laughs> right? We, we do stupid stuff, right? We, we get to this place in life, I'm just talking about as a culture, 
on Thanksgiving and we're ripping people apart for a $10 coupon, right? I'm just saying this to, to expose the lie. But that let's not follow the Hollywood holiday of the culture. Watch your Christmas movie at the end of the day. Make sure your kids know this is about Jesus. Make sure you know the reason for the season is Jesus. And what, what Jesus was is someone, our God, who laid down his life for us. For God so loved that he sent his only son. He demonstrated his love for us by laying down his life for us. Isn't that incredible? And I want to finish with this. Somebody say contentment. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. Because most people struggle in life, in their marriage, in their finances, because they're never content. And But that's the world that we live in, right? Every commercial is about getting something better. Your house has to be bigger. Your car has to be faster, right? Your teeth got to be whiter. Your skin has to be smoother. And, and we're in a rat race, right? I started getting a few grays coming in on the side of my head this last few months. So, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. I'm getting old. It's official. It's here, right? And we start every commercial that we see is we just got to look better. Our beard's got to be darker. Our, you know, you got to, I ain't going to go there. I'm going to leave the ladies alone. I'll just stick with the guys, right? It's a rat race. We got to get better. We got, we got to be better than everybody else. We have to one-up everybody. And I'm not, I'm not bashing Hollywood, but I'm using it as an example so we can see our own selves. But you see how crazy that a lot of celebrities, athletes, Hollywood dresses, Right? They look like they just walked out of Hunger Games wearing the dumbest stuff you've ever seen and you're trying to figure out why do they look like that? Well, it's because they have the money in their not being content. They have to look better than everybody else, right? But they have the money to one-up. They're not even on our level. They're on a new level competing on some stage we've never been on, wearing big, dumb elephant boots and massive hats with peacock feathers on them and men wearing Daisy Duke suits, like crazy stuff. I'm like, why are they dressing like that? But you know what? We're the same way on a different level. We do it with, our, with the boat. We'll do it with our house. We'll do it with all the little things, with our Chevys. They're doing Lamborghinis, and we're doing to Toyota, Chevy, that kind of stuff. It's just a different level. But we can look at that and say, wow, they're, oh, they're crazy, right? I can't believe that, but we're the same way. That's the same heart. They're just on a different level. We're not thankful. We're not content. We got to be better than everybody else. Our wedding has to be bigger than everybody else. My truck's got to be higher than everybody else's. My car's got to be louder. Our kids got to be better dressed, right? We, all, all the things. All the things. That's what my wife says. I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to say it. all the things. That's what she tells me. It's all the things, Jared. They got to have all the things. I'm not sure what the things are, but they, they got them all. But we got to be content. Let's read the Bible. Proverbs 14, it says, it is healthy to be content. Be satisfied. Jesus will satisfy you in your life. In everything that you face, every trial that you go through. The satisfaction of life doesn't come from what we can attain or what we can give or what we can produce with these hands because in any moment, it can all be taken like that. Everything that you think you built, that you think that you have, you think you've worked for can all be taken in a matter of a moment. Even as a nation, you see where our nation is. Just the financial aspect of it and how crazy our politics are, right? It can all turn in a moment. Everything, we, we think we have money, we think our nation is in a good place, and we think, oh, we're the best nation in the world, and I believe that, I love my country, but you know what? In a moment, one person can mess it all up. Amen? And I'm not getting political. I'm just saying that's not where our trust is. My trust is in an election. Trust me, it's definitely not in an election. God help us all. If we think our trust is in a dollar bill, a dollar bill, it's not worth as much as it used to be, right? You go out to dinner, instead of paying 40, you're paying 140. So what, why am I saying that? It's not our hope. My hope is not in the, the things of this world. It's in Jesus. The joy of the Lord, the Bible says, is our strength. The joy is not when things are going good. Christmas, normally things are good, right? Got the family over, things are, things are going well. 
having fun. You're eating food. Things are, you know, there's happy. There, you're, you're watching Christmas movies. You got time off. You go on a vacation. Whatever, whatever you're doing, that's not the joy. The joy is when it's all over that you can still look to the Lord and be thankful and go back to work with a smile on your face, not in debt. Or maybe you did go in debt, but you're still happy. Lord, help you. And it says in Proverbs 14.30, I'll read that again in the New King Translation. A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. Let's stand together as we close in prayer this morning. And I'll read one last scripture in Psalm 17, verse 15. And you can put that on the screen. David says, but as for me, my contentment is not in wealth, but is seeing you and knowing all is well between us. And when I awake in heaven, I will be fully satisfied for I will see you face to face. Somebody say fully satisfied. We can be satisfied in Jesus. And we've all searched, right? We do things. We, you know, I don't, anything I'm speaking of today is not even out of um, something that we have gotten completely right. But that as a body, as a church, we're growing together. We, we got to get better. And, I guess what I'm saying is let's make this Christmas a little different. Let's remember who Jesus is, what he did for us. And as Pastor Mike quoted Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. But you know, the enemy has plans as well. We need Jesus. We need his protection. We need his guidance we need the blood of Jesus that we applied before the service we need the blood of Jesus that not only redeems us Jesus didn't just come and die on the cross that we could get to heaven that's a very simple way of putting it but it's much deeper than that but he died that we could walk a relationship with him we could walk a life with him as the Bible tells us yea that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death that we don't have to fear evil, but that he is our peace, he's our comforter, he will walk with us through whatever life will bring. And this morning, I want us to honor Jesus. Can we just take a moment? Lord, we honor you. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for dying for us. In our place, no, not that we would become religious people, but lovers of Jesus. And today we say thank you as we celebrate Christmas. Lord, I pray that we would have that Christmas joy, not a Christmas spirit that we would see from a movie, but Lord, the joy of knowing you as our Savior. Today we say thank you. Come on, just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Today I want to pray with all of us here, and maybe you're at a place where you need to receive Jesus, this Jesus we're talking about. Maybe you've been religious. Maybe you've been at a place where you've you've walked away and you haven't had a good relationship with Jesus and you say I need to recommit my life to him or maybe it's the first time you say I've never given my life to Jesus I've never accepted this gift I've heard it I've even celebrated it but today I want to know it for myself I want to receive this gift Jesus made a very bold statement at the time he was living in a very religious uh, moment in history he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one gets to God the Father except through me. That was a turning point in his ministry. When he declared that he was the Son of God. And he was the ultimate sacrifice to set us free and to forgive us from our sin. And so today I ask, if that's you in any way, you want to receive Jesus in your heart. Just take a moment and bow your head. I don't do that out of religion. I do that to give you a moment to contemplate. Is that you today? Do you want to receive Jesus in your heart? And on the count of three, if you want to make that decision today, we're going to pray in just a moment. But on the count of three, would you just lift up your hand and put it back down? One, two, three. Is that you? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see all those hands. Thank you very much. God's doing a work in your heart right now. He's already been working. Maybe it started earlier in the service. 
and he's just continued to work on your heart. Anybody else want to join those? You say, you know, that's me. Would you count me in that prayer? Anybody else this morning? Amen. We're going to pray together. I saw many, many hands go up all over the room. And what an amazing thing to be able in this Christmas season to say, Jesus, thank you for what you did for me. And in return, I'm going to give you my life. And so today I want to ask some of my leaders to come forward. We're going to close the service with prayer. I want to ask some of my leaders to come forward. And if you raised your hand, don't be shy. This is a safe place. I want to personally pray with you. Would you come forward and would just stand down to the front? If you're going to make that decision today, I want to personally pray with you. Would you come? Church, would you encourage them? Come, come, come. Come, don't be shy. Come on, come to Jesus this morning. Come on, sing it. You are in the air I'm breathing. If you need to come with your family, you need to come with a spouse, with your kids. Come, come, come to Jesus this morning. Come back to me. I feel our heart beating again. It feels so good to know you are my friend. Before we pray, I just have an urge in my spirit. I know a lot more hands went up. You don't have to come forward, but I don't want you to miss out. When you step forward, in, it's like making, it's, um, like when I, when I got married to my wife, we picked the day, we invited a lot of people, we made it official, we got the paperwork, and we invited everyone to watch the commitment we're making to one another. It's important to make a commitment and to also share it with those that are here, a public statement saying, I'm giving my heart to Christ. So I'm gonna ask one more time, maybe you're with your spouse, your family, would you just turn and say, do you need me to go forward with you? I'll walk with you. Just ask somebody near you. Would you like to make that decision today? I'll go with you and encourage them. You guys can sing that one more time and just encourage somebody next to you. If that's them and they're shy, come to Jesus as we sing. Where the tidings come back to living, I feel my heart beating again. You feel so good to know you are my friend. Come on, let's pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you came to this earth. And you lived a perfect life. And today we celebrate you. Today I give you my heart. I give you my life. I recognize I need you for forgiveness of my sins. Heal me, cleanse me, restore me. In your name we pray. Amen. They're going to begin to pass out communion today is communion sunday so we're going to close by going to the to the table and if you made that decision today some of our leaders they're going to spend a few moments with you but we'll make sure that all those are served up front as well and we're going to go to the table before jesus went to the cross you know the famous picture where all the disciples are together and the last supper and Jesus was with his disciples and they were per preparing and well Jesus was preparing to lay down his life and he's contemplating everything that's about to go down and the Bible says that Jesus prepared it says that he broke bread and he poured the wine and and he told them he said guys I want you to do this what we're doing today and I want you to do it in remembrance of me that you wouldn't forget. Sometimes we can be forgetful. Even in the doing of church and everything we do, you know, as Christians and coming to church and things, we can get lost in the repetition and forget the power of what Jesus did on the cross. And Jesus told them, he said, I want you to do this. I want you to do this in remembrance of, of me. And today I want us to remember what Jesus did. Remember what he did on the cross and the blood and the power that's in the blood. And you see there's two cups there. 
One has the bread and one has the juice there. If I can get the bread out. There we go. And I want us to take the bread and Jesus told them, he said, this is my body. Has everybody been served? Anybody waiting? Just raise your hand. They'll, they'll get it to you if you haven't got any yet. Awesome. We've got one over here. Anybody else? Just wave and make sure you're served. Okay. And Jesus took the bread and he broke, broke the bread and he said, this is my body. It has been broken for you. And when Jesus went to the cross, his body was broken and bruised and beaten for us. And today we're going to remember that. Are you thankful that Jesus went to the cross? His body was broken for you and I. We just take the bread. You just lift and say, thank you, Jesus. Your body was broken for me. I remember. You can partake of the bread. And he took the cup. And he said, this wine, this juice, it represents my blood. And today we remember that his blood was spilled for us. The final thing that happened on the cross, that spear went into his side as they wanted to make sure that Jesus was actually dead. And the Bible says blood and water flowed. He spilled his blood for us so that we could be whole and receive the character of Christ. And so today we take the juice. We say, thank you, Jesus for your blood that was shed for me you can partake amen would you give the lord a great hand of praise this morning come on let's give him a, a good praise let's thank the lord amen amen thank you for being here today those that are online thank you for joining us turn to somebody on your way out and tell them merry christmas and we'll see you next week